Hello, hello, my squidlings. It is Katie here, and today we're gonna be unboxing the Arts and Acts box for the month of July 2020, and I'm really excited. So, honestly, without further ado, and without me smacking things over there, we can go ahead and get this unboxing going. Do some swatches, do some illustrations. I'm really excited to just kind of get into this box because this month is World Watercolor Month, so I'm really hoping for some watercolor stuff. All right, so we have the usual standbys which are the bubble envelope and the items inside. And of course we have a surface because this is the plus box. So let's start getting things out. So the first thing I wanna get out are the cards. I like grabbing these out just so I have something to reference as I go. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is the surface. So this is a plus item. This is the Grumbacher Mixed Media Hidden Wire Sketchbook. This is where the wire is as you can tell, but it's like hidden by the case, it's kind of cool. There are 40 sheets, they are acid free, it is a 7x10 size, uh, 90 pounds, uh, that's pretty cool. So yeah, and it looks like it's got this cool, like you can remove it, work outside the book, and then reinsert it without having to rip it out. Uh, so I find that really, really cool, but they're also perforated if you want to rip it out. That's pretty, pretty cool. It's got a really smooth texture. I don't know how well you'll be able to see that, but it does have a really smooth texture. And then the other plus item is this. So this is a Molotow Graphics Art Masking Liquid Pump Marker. It's a lot of words to say. This is a masking fluid pin. It's actually pretty cool. I have some and I think they're really cool. So this is what the nib looks like before you use it. Um, and I can actually show you my mine. I haven't used it in a while, but this is what the tip typically looks like when you've gone ahead and used it. Um, basically you shake it to get the masking fluid all mixed up and then you write with it like a pen, let it dry, and it's masking fluid. It's actually really cool. So I'm excited to have another one of these. I actually have kind of too many. Um, I, I bought more than I thought I did, <laughs> so, um, but these are really cool. I don't use them a ton, but they are really fun. And then everything else comes in the regular Art Snacks box, so first off, we're gonna look at the candy. This is a Smarties candy. I love these, so I'm always excited to have more. Then we've got, this is wrapped a lot smaller than normal. Uh, usually it's a bit longer, so maybe there aren't as many pins in here. Oh, I'm excited. Okie dokie. So let's talk about this first. This is a Zig Brush 2.0, and it is a petite. That's pretty cool. So let's open it up. So it comes really condensed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, do not carry around while filled with water. So you uncork this. Oh shoot, that's the brush. That's the whole brush. That is so cute. It's so tiny. I love this. All right, I love that. Doesn't have a cap, but I suppose this kind of, you know, works as the cap. I love that, okay. The next thing I'm seeing here is the sticker. I love this gradient and it's perfect for summer. Absolutely love that. Then, okay, I'm, I'm trying to avoid the pans, but I just can't anymore. So we have two colors here. These are Kudatake Zig colors. And I, I don't know what shades they are, but they're individually wrapped. These are also part of the newer colors that uh, Kudatake Gansai Tombi released recently. They released a 12 set, um, so these were the newer ones. So I got number 11, which is natural beige, and I got number 71, which is Indian red. So I'm excited to swatch those out and play with them. Then we've got a Plumchester item. So Plumchester, if you don't know, is Art Snacks' own art supply brand, which I think it's pretty cool. Um, and this is a fine liner. I got a P8, so that's pretty nice. It's just a thick black fine liner. And then lastly, we have something I'm pretty excited about. I'm a little miffed this wasn't in the Daniel Smith box, but anyway. This is a quinacridone violet. I do not have this color, so that's really cool. I know you can do a couple of cool things with these. You can actually cut them up and put them in a um, empty watercolor pan. Um, so these are watercolor sticks. It's literally just dried watercolor. It's pretty cool. 
So I'm excited to use this one too. Um, and yeah, that's all of it. So we're going to go ahead and swatch them out and see what they look like. Time to start the swatches. So as usual, I plop the sticker down in there and I just do some little doodles. I've been doing some squid doodles lately, which has been fun. Um, and I just swatch all the paints out. And it's mostly watercolor paint, so there's not a lot to it. Um, just, you know, throwing some pigment down and <laughs> laying some water on top of it. Not really a difficult. So the paper I used didn't really work too well with the Daniel Smith watercolor stick, at least for the swatches. Um, it definitely gave it a more textured look, which I'm not a huge fan of, but I know some people are. However, you can get pigment directly from the stick. So, you know, it works no matter how you want to paint. And you can't see it on camera, but I laid down the masking fluid and you'll see me actually putting some water and paint over it. Um, and when I rub it off, I made a bloop and I actually, uh, <laughs> I used an eraser, which you can use an eraser to get these off, but it makes it more difficult. And sometimes it gets ground into the paper like it did on this one. So that was totally user error. So I want to keep that in mind. However, this pen doesn't really do well with a lot of layers of masking fluid. It actually does well with like thin layers and like thin lines and stuff. So another thing I wanted to tell you and show you about is the cool thing about this sketchbook is that the pages can come out and go back in. I ended up doing a second illustration instead, not instead, but like in addition to, uh, because I just didn't feel like this illustration was worthy, I guess. Um, but I just didn't have a lot of time the day I filmed the part you're seeing right now, and so I ended up filming something later. So for my test, I drew like a little squid, and I wanted to test out that masking fluid, and then over on the right-hand side, I just drew some little seashells and a little sea star. I thought it would be really fun to do that, and maybe they might be stickers for Patreon. Um, I'm not sure yet. Um, not all of them, because the, the poor little shell up top did not turn out very well, and you'll see that later. Um, but I fine-lined everything, and then I went over it with... I think I put some masking fluid down, and then I went over it with some watercolor, and it was certainly fun, for sure. And I'm glad I did these doodles, but I'm also really glad I did a final piece, because I really liked the way it came out. So this is a really good time for me to do a little bit of self-promo, I'm sorry in advance, but if you're interested in anything over on my Patreon, I have got prints, stickers, acrylic charms. The theme this month is beach time, and I'm really excited about the acrylic charms this month. They are summer squids, and so they are, you know, squids theming to summer, and if you're interested in getting one of those or any of the many other rewards that I offer over there, there will be a link on the screen as well as a link in the description below. I'm sorry for the self-promo. <laughs> on to the rest of the video. So one of the things I wanted to practice doing in this is mixing the watercolor on the paper. I kind of wanted to see how this paper took watercolor, if it could take like a lot of water, if it could take layers, like just how it took it, you know what I mean? Um, and I don't know. It, it was okay. Like, at first I thought I was going to be really disappointed because it wasn't, it, like, it seemed to work pretty easily. But later on in the video, this paper took so many layers. I was so proud of it. <laughs> so I, I really do like this sketchbook. I love this paper and I might be buying more of this sketchbook because it is really, really nice. So after the um, paint had dried, I went ahead and tried getting that masking fluid off. I started with an eraser, but ended up using my finger just because it was a lot easier. And uh, yeah, that seashell was not dry. So that was a whoopsie on my part. Don't remove masking fluid when it's wet. Not the masking fluid, but the paint, because it's just as bad as doing anything with wet masking fluid. It completely tore it. So then I put it back in my sketchbook and we live to see another day. <laughs> so on the next two pages, I did some thumbnailing over on the left side and on the right hand side, I just started painting. I, you know, I designed my piece and we went in. I wanted something beachy because again, over on Patreon, my theme is beach time and I like to stick with my themes. So yeah, and I thought that I kind of sketched this without the colors in mind. And then when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? The colors I got really lent themselves to some kind of like a sunset type of thing. So I was like, you know what? Let's embrace that. So I'd lay down a wash, dropped in some really light shadows and stuff. And then I actually put on some masking fluid and let that dry so I could have some kind of like not stark white clouds, but like lighter clouds, if that makes any sense. And then I started layering on the sand. So with the sand and the water... <laughs> I had a hard time differentiating them because I used all the colors and all the things, and that was a mistake, by the way. Um, I should have definitely kept them separate. 
but I decided to use a lot more of the quinacridone violet color in the sand just to uh, give it that depth and you know that I needed and I ended up going a little overboard I did a lot of wet into wet and I needed to stop and let it dry so I ended up having to do that so I moved on to the water and with the water, I made the mistake of going in with more quinacridone violet. I should have used the Indian red. The Indian red was really great for, like, cooling things down because it looks really vibrant when you put it on, but it dries, like, an earthier color, which is nice. So it definitely mutes things down. So with the character, I wanted her mainly to be with the fine liner because I wanted her to stand out quite a bit. Uh, and initially, uh, as I was lining this, I actually really liked the idea of keeping her... Uh, just in fine liner, maybe adding some detail, so you'll see me adding just like, you know, the little sketchy lines and stuff. But then I ended up, uh, not doing that, but you'll see that later. Uh, the nice thing about the Kudatake colors is the fact that they are really opaque, especially that natural beige. It's very, very opaque. So I could, it was almost like gouache. I could come back over it and, like, the sand and stuff and just do some more with it, so that was nice. Also, I wanted her to be a little backlit, <laughs> so I tried my best at that. I'm not really good at it, but I think it turned out well enough. It wasn't the best, but it turned out well enough. And then, uh, yeah, I decided to take off the masking fluid from one of the clouds, and then I got tired of doing that because by you get, like, weird finger burn <laughs> from doing that. So uh, I took a break from that, and I decided to work more on her skin uh, just to give it some more depth. And, uh, yeah, and then I added some lighter tones, and her skin started feeling really pink for a while, so I added a layer of the Indian Red, which, again, really cooled it down, and it felt really nice. Even though I got all warm colors, I actually was really able to get a nice variety of colors. They mix really well together, so I was pretty happy about that. But overall, this box was actually probably one of my favorites. I really love the colors. I really love the items. I'm a sucker for watercolors, so... Yeah, but anyway, here is a look at the final piece. I want to thank you all so incredibly much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this unboxing. I'm pretty much an unboxing channel now because I swear that's all I do. I love unboxings. But anyway, uh, if you enjoyed this unboxing, please hit that thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below and let me know if you got the Arts Next box, what colors did you get and did you create anything with it? And if not, did you create anything while watching the video? Stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope you have the most squiddly doodly awesomest day ever. <laughs> Alright, until next time, my adorable goodlings, toodaloo!